Pandas has a lot of options to work with, manipulate and um, extract data from tables and so on. And here I want to show a couple of more of these options that are quite handy. So first of all, I import Pandas as PD and then I have some data that I am reading here. So this is some data set, mineral names here, then there are some uh, element compositions of samples and so on. So first of all, let's have a look again at filters and how these work. So filter works as follows. For example, I have this data frame here and then for example from MGO, I want to extract all the data um, which have an MGO, MGO concentration that is larger than say 48%. So I execute this and at first I get for the MGO column um, the result whether this condition here is either true or false. So the, for the first data set MGO has more than 48% for the second as well, for the third it's not the case, so the condition is false and so on. And this here is my filter and for short I'm only writing fill here. Fill. And then I execute it and again of course I don't see anything because it's now in the fill variable but it's still the same. Now this fill variable I can use for the data frame within square brackets. So I'm applying this filter to the data frame, I execute this and now I'm getting only those data sets in which magnesium oxide is larger than 48%. So maybe let's use SiO. SiO2 and we can actually see this. Um, that this is the case here, or maybe let's put it 58%, it's a bit more visible. So now only those data sets with SI2 more than 58% are displayed or are now selected within this. Now this is also possible, this kind of filter for strings. So for example, if I want only those minerals, or only olivine displayed here, I can use mineral and then I'm making a test, a condition, whether this is actually OL. Run it and now I'm getting only those data sets that have olivine in the mineral column. Now maybe I want to have olivine and spinel. Well, not olivine and spinel because there's only olivine or spinel. So I can copy this and then I need an or operator which is just a vertical line and I put in here spinel and now this will not work and the thing is here because Python doesn't really know where something is starting and something is ending so I need to put this into round brackets now it's clear that this is one condition or and this is a second condition and it's of course not Python but pandas and I'm getting all those data sets that have either olivine or spinel. So that's quite nice here. And then there's one very neat function for if I want to have neither olivine nor spinel but all the others. So the complementary filter basically to what I'm seeing here. And this works simply as follows. The F then the tilde then the filter and I run it and now I'm getting everything that is not olivine and not spinel. So this is here. So this can be sometimes very handy. Now, and this is all very good, but there's an easier way, especially for strings, to write this command here. And this is called is in. So the filter works as follows. So again, I have a filter, I have df and I'm looking in the mineral column, but now I'm checking whether the following um, names are within this column. So I put a list here, I'm checking whether olivine is, olivine is in here, I'm checking whether spinel is in here, and then I'm applying this filter, and I'm getting the same data set as above here. But it's much more concise and readable, and I can simply extend it for example, to let's say um, clinopyroxene, I could put in uh, orthopyroxene 
and so on. And I could even have this list outside here, which is quite helpful. So maybe this is my selection list. And I put the selection list in here and then I will get exactly the same results. So this can be often quite helpful to have it like that. But now, as you can see, I have something like clinopyroxene and orthopyroxene. And maybe, actually, I don't know exactly whether I have clinopyroxene, orthopyroxene and pyroxene. I only know that pyroxene always means PX. So this is a substring of this entire string. And I would like to search only after this, or filter only those that have as substring PX. And this I can do using another command, um, which is called string contains. So my filter looks as follows. DF, again, mineral, and then I have string, and the string shall contain, so string contains, and then I put in here PX. And I apply this filter to the data frame. And now I likely uh, con a string contains, oh, contains, that's not helpful. Contains, and then I'm getting a list with clinopyroxene and orthopyroxene because it's now looking for whether PX is part of this string. And this can often be very helpful in such a case, but maybe also I have not only OL, but maybe olivine, maybe olivines, and so on. But if I only use the substring olivine, I will get all these names then. And then this is string contains. In cases, pandas might not have the specific function you are looking for, but in this case, it's possible to build your own function. I'll show you one use case here where this might be the case. So, for example, and I need to load some additional data table here first that I already prepared. So I have here the data table of the average element concentrations in the various chondrite groups, so metroid groups here, as an example. And now I might want, because it's a very fundamental table with all these um, element concentrations, and maybe I want to extract the concentration of a certain element. Say for thorium, I want to know the CI chondrite composition, or for um, lithium, the CV chondrite element concentration, and so on. So usually this is rather simple. What I could do here is I use now this data frame is called CI data frame. I could use CI data frame and then extract, for example, for thorium, this has the index 4. 84, so I use 84, comma, and then CI, and then I use the location command here, and I will get 29. So that's all fine. However, I do not want to use 84, so I don't, oh, well, I don't know. But yeah, I don't want to use 84, I want to use thorium, so I want to put in thorium here. How am I going to do this? I start by using a filter. So I want to have the index, right? I start by using a filter. So in CI in the CI, CI data frame, in the element column, I check where I can find thorium. And I execute this. And I get again for this column here the result of this um, test, of this condition where it's false and it's true. And in index 84, of course, it is true. Now I want to know the index of this. I don't want to filter this. Filter this time I want to know the index. And for this I can use CI data frame index. And then I want to know the index of where this is true. So I can copy the entire um, line here, put it in here. I could also do it like having a filter like before. So would be possible as well. Might look a little bit more familiar. And I get the index, which is 84. But I have this entire line here, which does look a little bit messy. I only want 84. So I want to extract the first element here. So I use square brackets and zero. And now I'm getting the first element, which is 84. And this is what I want to have. 
and I call this then index of the element index el equals this um, 84. And then I can go back to basically this one here to ci data frame and I can now use the index el index element and again maybe ci chondrites and now I should use again the location command here and I get again 29 ppb. Now that's fine. This is what I want. And here I can, here I can choose thorium, here I can choose also if I want um, the category, column and so on. And from this, so I will use this to build now a command in the next cell here. So I make a definition definition and the function I want to define or command I use this interchangeably shall be extract data because I want to extract a certain data and then I have a category column and this category column is basically the element so I replace this by element as a second I will have the element column so in which column to check for the element, this is the CI column here. So I replace this by CI. And finally, I have a category row if I want to, or just could also call it just element name. Let's call it this for the moment, doesn't matter. And I put this in here. And of course, after the definition, I need a column and everything in here must be indented. Otherwise, it's not part of this definition command. And then here I have the result and then I want to return the result. All right, so let's run this definition and let's then try and use it. So extract data, then I have round brackets, then I have the category column. So this is element. So I'm checking an element. I have the element column. So this is um, in this case, for example, CI, and there's some quotation mark missing. And finally, I have the category row, and this is thorium. Um, maybe the names are not the best here, but should still work. And I run it, and I get 29. Now, this is fine, because if I want to have thorium from not in CI chondrites, but in CV chondrites, I only need to change this in here. And I get, get the thorium concentration in the CV for the CV chondrites. Or if I want a different element, let's say silicon. Now I get silicon. Now this is in weight percent. If I want to have aluminum, I get the aluminum concentration again in weight percent. So this would be something, of course, to add in here. But for the moment, it doesn't matter. So I made my own function here with which I can extract from a specific table some very basic data I might need for some um, calculations I'm doing. So that's quite helpful. Two other helpful commands are first count the number of identical elements within a table. So this works very simply as follows. For example, I use again mineral, the mineral column here, and then I make a value counts. And if I do this, I see how many clinopyroxenes are within this table, how many olivine, how many spinel, and so on. So quite, quite neat. Also quite helpful is if I want to rename columns. So let's just have a look at the data frame briefly. If I want to have weight percent after each of these oxides here, for example, what I can do is, well, let's make a dictionary here. And then I have SiO2. This is the current name, and this shall be replaced by the new name, which is SiO2 in weight percent. And let's make a second one, like for example, titanium oxide shall be um, replaced by as well titanium oxide in weight percent. And let's call this new names this dictionary and then I have the data frame and I rename the data frame, rename and I want to 
change the columns, so the column names, by the new names, and so it's applied directly to the data frame. I call this in place true. I run it, and I should also display the data frame. And now these are called SI2 weight percent, A2 weight percent, and this could then be continued. And the good thing is, I could just store this, and if I have multiple such tables, I can easily rename all the category names here um, by simply running this, for example, in a loop. Now, finally, um, of course, you can then, if you rename this, um, export this new data frame. And um, this is done by a very similar command like with reading a data frame. Now it's data frame 2 CSV. If you want to export it as a CSV file, and then you need to let me just copy and paste this from up here. Um, this entire path here. Oh, maybe it would have been faster to just type it. So that's the path. And then let's call this um, test CSV. And I don't want to have an index, for example. So I made the index equals false. And then I run it. Now, uh, oh, index. And then I run it. And if I want to check whether I actually really saved it, I can read it again. I don't need the index here now. Uh, df, not df, but pd. Read Excel, and I don't need this actually. And I get this new data frame, which I have stored now with weight percent. And I can also check it here on my Google Drive. And I have this test in here. And apparently, I made a dot here, which I don't want, just so. And of course, it's also possible to export it as an Excel file, then to Excel. And the name ending would also be Excel as X. And I can, again, check whether I successfully saved it. Read Excel. Um, wrong name. And it's here. And if I look in my folder, I already also have test. Uh, it sometimes takes a while to appear. So, but I read it, so it should be there. So it should appear here in just a second as well. So this is how you can work with pandas and use all these various ways of manipulating and then also exporting your data frame into a new file.